So first, I'd like to thank uh, the PDF team, Mika, Andrew, Chris, everyone, for the invitation. OK, so here's a tough question. Who is anonymous? Even after four years of research, I still struggle for an adequate answers. Since 2008, various groups of hackers, technologists, activists, and geeks have used the name and the iconography to organize diverse genres of collective action. But as a creature of the internet, Anonymous often rallies around censorship as well as privacy issues. Now, one thing is certain. Anonymous is tailor-made for the news. Its anonymity, and especially its wily actions, like DDoSing, feed into the media's appetite for the sensational. Now, boutique media outfits like Wired and Slate get most about anonymous right. But allow me to correct two misconceptions about them. Many journalists portray participants not simply just as hackers. Many are not, and this is important. But as something like the honey badgers of activism. So for those that don't know, the honey badger is a fearsome, feral animal. Now watch this. Look, it snakes up in the tree. Honey badger don't care. Honey badger don't give a shit. It just takes what it wants. Whenever it's hungry, it just, ew, and it eats snakes. OK. So like the honey badger, anonymous. It's frightening, fascinating, incredibly brave, but incredibly stupid. So the media narrative goes. The honey badger, like anonymous, just don't give a shit. Well, given this characterization, journalists are shocked when their actions actually seem more mature. It is for this reason that over the last five years, I've been asked at least 20 times to comment on the transition of anonymous from puberty into young adulthood. I go gross, and then I have to like correct the misconception. The group, according to the media, has transitioned at least half a dozen times over this period. Now, fair enough, back in 2008, when they were known as the internet hate machine, when there were internet trolls just pranking, Anonymous did transition dramatically. They transitioned unexpectedly from internet motherfuckery, as they called it, to earnest but still irreverent protest, at first against the Church of Scientology. It matured again when it helped in the Arab Spring. Months later, in September, Anonymous left puberty behind when it became an informal PR wing for the Occupy movement. It really grew up in the winter of 2013 when airing rape cases in Ohio and Halifax, Canada. But Anons are not the maturing honey badgers of activism. The honey badgers of activism could work for LulzSec. This was a breakaway group that has since disbanded. And they went on an unprecedented 50-day hacking spree in the summer of 2011. Like the honey badger, there was little rhyme or reason to their targets. They didn't give a shit. They did it for the lulls. They violated core norms that had emerged in Anonymous, which is one of the reasons, not the only one, but one, they left. Anonymous actually rises up for reasons. The so-called juvenile spirit is certainly there, but it's just best thought of as irreverence. They are irreverent because they hatched from trolling. They hatch from the sometimes hilarious and sometimes terrifying world of the lulls, deviant humor. Operations are earnest, but if someone can inject a dose of the lulls or trolling into an operation, someone will. Take Operation BART in August of 2011. Anonymous was spurred into action when San Francisco's metro was going to shut off cell phone service to thwart anti-police brutality protests. So Anonymous, of course, organizes street demonstrations. A couple of individuals hack into BART, and then someone found a semi-nude photo of BART's official spokesperson, Linton Johnson, who was very proud about their decision. And he published it on BART Lull's website with the following brazen rationalization. If you're going to be a dick to the public, then I'm sure you don't mind showing your dick to the public. So Anonymous has toned down the lulls, but deviance and humor remain integral features to its political culture. I think Anonymous is best viewed as an insurgent protest ensemble. It has become the face of popular unrest across the globe, from Spain, more recently in Turkey. A while back, they even showed up, well, not really they, but 
the Polish uh, parliamentarians who were protesting ACTA, a copyright bill, took on the mask. Anonymous is particularly good at three things. First of all, they're good at amplifying existing causes. In this way, they're event-driven. They're reactive. The hacking and the leaking are two proactive exceptions. They're good at boosting existing oppositional movements. It's a little bit like the Colbert bump for social movements. And then finally, they convert amorphous discontent into tangible form. Anonymous is unique in its bombast and unpredictability and for these reasons, but they're still part of a broader and diverse and growing ecosystem, that which I call weapons of the geek which I'm referencing and playing with one of the most famous anthropology books, Weapon, Weapons of the Weak, which is about peasant politics. These hackers and geeks have diverse skills, ethical sensibilities, national backgrounds. That's right, they're not all libertarian basement dwellers. An increasing number of hackers and geek, geeks who are not anonymous, some hate anonymous, are taking political matters in their own hands. They have sidestepped copyright and reinvented the law with the copyleft, to open up software. They've developed encryption tools like Pretty Good Privacy and Tor to protect from state and corporate snooping. Dozens of other examples come to mind from the pirate parties to hacker spaces to policy geeks who are sprouting in DC to educate politicians. Within this emerging digital environmentalism, Anonymous specializes in acts of disobedience and defiance. It has taught us that the internet will judge often quite swiftly, the actions of individuals, of corporations, and governments. To do so, they exploit a feature our, of our collective digital predicament. There's so much digital data there to either legally access, illegally access, but once released, impossible to contain and sequester. So adept at publicity, Anonymous can create PR nightmares for its targets. They inject suspense drama and intrigue into the issues they take on. Although Anonymous can ruin your reputation, they're already so notorious, it's difficult to smear theirs. They don't need to please donors, and without a master plan, they have tremendous freedom in thought and action. Sure, they've been occasionally branded terrorists, but to this date, this label has not stuck. Why have they grown so rapidly? There are many reasons, but for one thing, it's more open compared to other spheres of purely hacker action. These hackers in Anonymous are essential. They, they maintain infrastructure, they expose weak security, they hunt for information to leak. However, anyone can take the name simply by saying so, but most join existing teams and groups of which they're simultaneous stable ones in operations. Non-hackers write communiques, give interviews on chat channels, design their beautiful posters, and edit videos. Their beauty and their frustration lie in their openness and their spontaneity. Hard to predict, they're impossible to govern. This prevents their assimilation and neutralization by institutional actors. As Anons like to boast, we are not your personal army. Still, their effectiveness is contingent on a broader political milieu. Social change requires diversity, policy reform, rowdy tactics, fine-tuned interventions. Distinct modalities need not compete. They can cross-pollinate between the EFF, demand progress, rise up, and anonymous, and many more. It's clear that weapons of the weak are a geopolitical force to contend with, especially in the future. But could their actions be counterproductive? Some say yes, their illegal tactics could lead governments to restrict civil liberties. They may paint them, the government, as one of H.L. Mencken's imaginary goblins there to menace the public. But I think we must assess their cause and effects historically. Long before their birth, national governments around the world aspired to control the internet. Nations have curtailed civil liberties. State secrecy and surveillance are now so pervasive that even if Anonymous were to vanish or if it had never existed, the post 9-11 erosion of civil liberties would not be different. And we just got news that the NSA um, is not simply cooperating with uh, Verizon, but with nine other internet companies who are basically giving over data to the NSA and FBI. Anonymous has to be seen a reaction to, not some simplistic cause of this trend. Anonymous may not be the best recipe for democracy. It lacks transparency, largely because of the illegal tactics. 
Their sociology is labyrinthian. Misinformation abounds. A few operations creep close to vigilantism. Nevertheless, Anonymous has enabled action for some at a time when many feel existing channels for change are beyond their reach or simply too corrupt. It has not proposed a plan to topple institutions or change unjust laws, but it has made evading them seem urgent and desirable. In explaining why he joined, one core organizer told me, I was sold on the raids, the DDoSing, the black faxes, because I'd been an activist for four or five years before I got involved in Anonymous. And I just experienced that once vested interests have made a government decision, lobbying by ordinary people won't get it changed back without scaring them a little. Civil disobedience may not be everyone's cup of tea. It doesn't always yield dividends, but it allows citizens to voice their dissent regarding causes they believe in. I worry about the future of digitally based dissent, especially in the United States. As we saw with Aaron Schwartz and we'll likely see with Jeremy Hammond, a hacker awaiting sentencing here in New York for his role in Anonymous, the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act can be wielded as a blunt legal tool. Prosecutors don't differentiate between principled action and criminal activity. Offline civil disobedience, such as trespassing, is treated as a political act, while similar behaviors online are treated as purely criminal. Given the internet's prominence in every aspect of our lives, citizens should not be discouraged from developing their political will online. So to finish, by participating in anonymous, individuals become part of something greater than themselves. Some will dedicate their years, years of their lives to activism, others will spend years in jail. I recently had a conversation with one European Anon. He explained that although he really had supported Obama for pulling soldiers out of Afghanistan, he was now one of the president's most voracious critics. This May, he completed a video for Operation Guantanamo, opening with a montage featuring Obama's repeated promises to close down the prison. The video highlights the hypocrisy of a president who ran a campaign on a promise he has failed to keep. He's outraged that Obama blames Congress when there are some actions he can take. This participant has made over 90 videos for Anonymous. He graduated from high school in May. I close my presentation with his video. Thank you. I have said repeatedly that I intend to close Guantanamo and I will follow through on that. I will close Guantanamo, I will restore habeas corpus. And promptly to close the detention facility at Guantanamo consistent with the national security and the foreign policy interests of the United States and the interests of justice I hereby order. There we go. Finally tonight, the Obama administration reverses course on trials for suspected terrorists. President Obama has authorized the restarting of the military trials there, effectively ending his two-year push to shut down Gitmo, at least for now. Greetings, citizens of the world. We have watched with dismay as a great injustice is being committed by the United States government in the Guantanamo Bay concentration camp. Imagine your father, your brother, your husband arrested sold for a bounty, black bagged and sent away to a foreign country, tortured for years on end, accused of being a terrorist. No trial or charge is given, no lawyer is brought in, no one is allowed to see him, with no end in sight, with no hope for justice. Over 100 men who have been held and tortured for years have gone on a hunger strike. On May 18th, it will have been 100 days since they have eaten voluntarily. Prisoners have died suddenly, violently, and suspiciously. All inmates in Guantanamo Bay have been locked in solitary confinement. Some are being force-fed, an international crime. These men face the prospect of a terrible death in prison despite many of them having been cleared for release years ago. One defense attorney has already committed suicide. It is time for the Obama administration to admit that this is a disgrace for any civilized country which upholds the rule of law. 
Guantanamo Bay must be closed at once. And the prisoners should be either returned to their home countries or given a fair trial in a federal court. Guantanamo Bay is an ongoing war crime. Anonymous will no longer tolerate this atrocity. We are outraged. We, the people in Anonymous, will not allow the most expensive prison on earth to be run without any respect for international laws. We stand in solidarity with the Guantanamo hunger strikers. We will shut down Guantanamo on May 17th to May 19th to coincide with the 100th day of the hunger strike. We urge everyone to join global actions on the ground and activist protests as well as Twitter storms, email bombs, and fax bombs in three days of non-stop action. We are anonymous. We are legion. We are everywhere. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us.